Electron is back on the pad at Launch Complex One as we count down to liftoff of Rocket Lab's 40-second Electron launch, a dedicated mission for IQPS called the Moon God Awakens. Liftoff is scheduled for 5 p.m. local time or 4 a.m. UTC on this beautiful summer evening on New Zealand's east coast. My name is Muriel Baker. And I'm Prachi Saknani. It is great to be joining you today from Rocket Lab Mission Control in Auckland, New Zealand. So far, we've had a smooth count for today's launch with operators currently giving us the green light for an on-time launch. The weather is clear, winds are low, and it is a perfect evening to send our 40-second electron to orbit. At T-minus 12 minutes, our launch director, Michael Pearson, will conduct a go-no-go -no -go poll, confirming all systems are ready in the final moments before launch. So we'll listen into that very soon. Launching today on Electron is IQPS, a Japanese Earth observation company using synthetic aperture radar images to map Earth. Their payload is the QPS-SAR-5 satellite called Tsukuyomi, named for the Japanese god of the moon and the reason behind today's mission name, the Moon God Awakens. Today's payload will join another IQPS satellite in orbit to form part of an eventual 36 satellite constellation capable of monitoring Earth at specific fixed points every 10 minutes, even at night and through bad weather conditions. Here's more about IQPS and their mission. The future begins in Kyushu. One meter ground resolution. Observe cars, ships, and other moving objects. World's first under 100 kilograms small SAR satellite. 36 satellites observe nearly anywhere on Earth in an average of 10 minutes. Different from camera satellites, radar satellites can take images even through clouds and even at dark nighttime. QPS SAR's revolutionary Earth observation data opens up an exciting new world. In the event of a disaster, QPS SAR satellites, which can observe irrespective of weather and time, are able to rapidly grasp the damage status and identify passable roads. Also, utilizing unique features of the radar, QPSR can detect changes of infrastructures such as roads and railways down to a few millimeters and pre-screen locations where accidents or malfunctions may occur. High frequency observation enables visualization and stationary observation of moving objects such as cars, ships, and planes. In addition, Analyzing data, together with economic, economic weather, weather, and other big data, allows us to forecast national and urban economies, along with future trends. QPS SAR images can be used to quickly create and frequently update 3D maps. This map shows accurate traffic information based on changing conditions, which is critical for realizing autonomous driving. Our ultimate goal is real-time map. A world in which satellite images are available for daily personal use, just like social media. QPSR creates a new world by supporting people and contributing to the development of Earth and humanity. Bring space closer. QPS SAR. We are looking forward to adding another IQPS satellite to space on today's mission and thankful to the team for their patience in getting to the launch pad. Today's mission is our first launch after a three-month hiatus following our September 19th anomaly. In the time since, our anomaly investigation has determined that the most probable cause of the satellite, oh, sorry, of the rocket failing was a highly complex set of conditions that allowed an unexpected electrical arc to occur within the second stage's power supply system. Our team's top priority has been to find a way to mitigate this concern. 
They investigated not only the root cause of the anomaly, but any other vulnerabilities across Electron. As, as a result, there are a couple of key corrective measures and changes that have been applied to today's and all future Electrons to make, make our launch vehicle that much more reliable. That's right, we have improved our pre-flight vacuum testing regime with new instruments implemented in the pre-flight tests, both at the component level and the stage level, that can sense partial energy discharge right down to the pico coulomb. We've also sealed up the battery frame on the second stage that contains all of the high voltage connections and equipment and pressurized it down to about 0.5 psi for launch. That's why our view from the camera above the battery frame will look a little bit different if you've followed along with enough of our missions to spot the difference. It's important to remember though that overall we have had 37 successful orbital missions to place 171 satellites in orbit. And the past two years had been a flawless record of 20 successful missions, one after the other. So we can't wait for today's return to service to add to that satellite tally once again. Absolutely, but right now we are only 12 minutes away from liftoff and you know what that means. Up next we have our Go No Go poll, where our operators in mission control give a status report on their systems to confirm whether or not we will proceed with the count. Let's listen into mission control and check in on how we're tracking for launch. And all stations LD on mission, just a reminder that we've entered a hold at T minus 12 minutes. Uh, just working on bringing a, a couple final values within bounds and we will be resuming the count shortly. From Mission Control, you might have heard there that they called out for a hold in the launch countdown. Now, our launch operators can call a hold at any point in the countdown if they notice anything unusual about the rocket before liftoff. What that means is that we've paused the clock at T minus 12 minutes to give Mission Control time to take a look at the data and see what has raised that red flag. Stay with us on the broadcast, though, as we'll keep up the comms channel to Mission Control up, so with that, we can listen out for some updates.
All stations LD on mission. Uh, this time we're going to be resuming the count imminently. Uh, please be prepared for the go no go poll. We'll get straight into that as the count resumes. Uh, but please raise any issues you foresee immediately. stations the count has been resumed we'll be proceeding straight into the go no go sequence stage stage is go avionics avionics is go gnc gnc is go vcon vcon is go t1 t1 is go gc gc is go pls pls is go rso rso is go met met is go RF. RF is go. MM. MM is go. LD Shadow. LD Shadow is go. LD Sup. LD Sup is go. Okay, all stations, the go no go sequence is complete. We are T minus 11 minutes and 8 seconds and counting. And we are go for terminal count at T minus 10 minutes. And from this time, the three word hold procedure is in effect. That was Mission Control reporting Electron Systems and the IQPS payload on board are confirmed healthy and good to go for an on-time launch. The range is ready to support. The weather continues to look good for liftoff at 5.05 local time or 4.05 a.m. UTC. Today's mission is heading to a 575 kilometer circular Earth orbit at a 42 degree inclination to add IQPS's next SAR satellite to its growing SmallSat constellation. With its constellation, IQPS is aiming for frequent Earth observation day and night that can contribute to social issues such as disaster prevention, defense, and environmental research. Here's more from the IQPS team. Our company IQPS is developing small SAR satellites, QPSR in Fukuoka, which is located in Kyushu, Japan, and currently operating three satellites. So Kyushu, this region has a good environment with the rocket launch facilities, a history of high quality manufacturing in industries like automobiles, and educational opportunities in space engineering. Our founder established IQPS in Kyushu with a mission to develop the space industry in this region. And we have carried on that mission by launching QPSR project in Kyushu and advancing the construction of a SAR satellite constellation. Looking beyond that, our vision is to make Japan the birthplace of space innovation from Kyushu and to free people from anxiety and support their daily lives through the satellite. The launch by Electron into our dedicated orbit is a strong tailwind towards the realization of our vision. So we are very excited with local government and partner companies in Fukuoka who has been cooperating with us. Currently, QPSR provides world-class high resolution and high image quality enabling us to observe the Earth at 446 centimeter resolution. 
Our future plan is to launch a total of 36 satellites, ultimately aiming to provide near real-time observations at around 10-minute intervals. By utilizing this high-frequency, high-resolution data, we envision contributing to the disaster management, infrastructure monitoring, and creating safe, secure communities in everyday life. Furthermore, after these global scale data are accumulated and combined and analyzed with other, with other valuable data, we think we will be able to foresee the future one step ahead. And by being able to see a step ahead future, we believe we can liberate people from uncertainty and make people's life more efficient and productive, such as avoiding traffic jam, escaping from disaster, and estimating the economy. Still, there is a long way to go to achieve this, but we hope one day our data will become the backbone to foster a new, sustainable, and valuable environment for the world. It was this early April when we asked Rocket Lab if there is an available launch spot for our satellite. On behalf of IQPS, I would like to appreciate to all the Rocket Lab members for the hard work in making our satellite be launched in this revolutionary short period. Thank you very much. Arigatou gozaimasu. We are thrilled to be launching IQPS on the Electron's 42nd mission today. Now, this mission is our 10th launch for the year so far, making 2023 our busiest launch year to date. Now, as we wait for liftoff, let's take a closer look at the numbers behind Electron launches. Welcome to Electron by the Numbers. Electron first took to the skies in 2017, and today we've launched 41 Electron rockets and counting. Electron's first stage is powered by nine 3D-printed Rutherford engines, while the second stage has just one vacuum-optimized Rutherford engine. To date, we've launched 409 Rutherford engines to space. Why not 410? Well, recently, we re-flew a Rutherford engine to space for the first time after recovering it on a previous mission. So this hardworking engine has done double duty. But Rutherford isn't the only type of engine on Electron. There's a single small but critical engine on Electron's kick stage called Curie. This reliable engine is used to circularize our orbit for payload deployment and can perform multiple burns to deploy multiple payloads to different orbits on the same mission. Electron launches from three pads. Two are located at our private orbital launch site in New Zealand and a third in Wallops, Virginia. So far, we've launched 38 missions from Launch Complex 1 and three from Launch Complex 2, with more coming up. It takes Electron roughly nine minutes to go from liftoff to orbit, reaching speeds of up to 27,000 kilometers per hour along the way. At liftoff, Electron weighs about 13,000 kilograms, and around 12,000 kilograms of that is liquid oxygen and kerosene. More than 170 satellites have been successfully deployed to orbit by Electron, usually to an orbit between 500 and 1200 kilometers, but sometimes all the way to the moon. And behind it all stands a dedicated team of hundreds of engineers, technicians, operators, and supporting team members who make Electron one of the world's leading launch vehicles. It's easy to forget to stop and smell the roses, but it is amazing to see those numbers. Now back on the pad, we are tracking no issues with the launch vehicle. IQPS's payload remains healthy and the weather is looking green for an on-time launch. So here's what you can expect next. At T minus two minutes, the flight computer on Electron will take over the launch countdown. Then at T minus one minute, 30 seconds, we should hear the call that LOX loading is complete on Electron. Shortly after that, at T minus one minute, we can expect confirmation that the launch vehicle's first and second stages are pressurized for launch, followed by the final countdown to liftoff at T minus 10 seconds. Let's hand over now to Mission Control. All stations, LD on mission. From now on, there should be no red flags in your critical LCCs. Beacon, LD mission. 
LDV gun. Lock auto sequence and confirm. Confirmed, locked. And please confirm all expected primary flight computer ASGOs are green. Confirmed, all ASGOs are green. And all stations, we are go for auto sequence start at T minus two minutes. LD is go for launch. Avionics batteries have switched to internal power. Ground power is disabled, vehicle is fully on internal power. AFTS is green and enabled for flight. So it is complete, system is in recirculation. Anti-geysering is disabled. Stage 1 and Stage 2 tanks are pressed. High flow engine purge enabled. Minus 20 seconds and counting. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Lift off. Electron has lifted off from Launch Complex 1 and we are 34 seconds into our flight. With Electron now clear of the pad, soon we will approach max Q or maximum aerodynamic pressure, the moment of the most amount of stress against the rocket. So let's listen in for the call from Mission Control that Electron has passed max Q. Vehicle is supersonic, approaching max Q. High voltage discharge nominal. Clear max Q. And there you have it, Electron has cleared max Q. A beautiful and nominal mission so far. Now up uh, 15 kilometers in altitude as the rocket reaches speeds of more than 2100 kilometers. Next up are three mission milestones that happen in quick succession. First up, we have MECO, or main engine cutoff. This is when all nine Rutherford engines on the first stage throttle down and then shut off completely. Very quickly after that, we have the separation oh, of the first and second stages, and you'll see that main booster tank fall away from Electron's second stage. We then have the ignition of the single Rutherford engine on Electron's, Electron's second stage, excuse me, as the mission I continues to orbit. Station. Those calls should be coming up from our operators and mission control very shortly.
Stage one propulsion holding nominal. Stand by for Mika in roughly 30 seconds. Fifteen seconds to Miko. Entered burnout detect mode. Miko confirmed. Stage operation successful. Stage two ignition confirmed. As you can probably tell from that applause, we have had a successful Miko stage separation and second stage engine start for Electron. Up next will be the fairing jettison, where the two halves of Electron's protective fairing split and fall away from the vehicle to expose IQPS's satellite to space in preparation for payload deployment. Now we might see those two halves on screen too as we clear that next milestone. Fairing jettison succeeded. That was them there on your screen. Electron's fairing halves have fallen away as planned. At three stage minutes and 42 seconds into the mission, the single Rutherford engine on Electron's second stage continues to burn bright as we make our way to orbit. High voltage we have a new nominal. view of the engine's nozzle that includes a nitrogen bottle that you can see on the top left of your screen, which has been introduced as part of an update to the second stage system. Now, this is providing pressurized gas to the enclosure covering these stages.